Hi folks. I thought I'd tell you about my quest to find a pocket knife for life, if that can be done. This is a Spyderco Endura. I purchased this in May of 1998, so it's 20 years old this month. Use it all the time. I always thought that the blade was a little more than I needed for an everyday knife, but it only weighed 2.9 ounces. Um, it fit in the pocket beautifully up against the pocket. You could reach in and grab your change or keys without it getting in the way. Getting in the way. Um, it's a great knife overall, but it's modern. I wanted a traditional, more of a traditional slip joint knife instead of this lockback. But it is neat. It is neat. The Endura is neat. It's got a partially serrated blade, which I thought I would hate, but turned out to really be useful. I remember once I, many times actually, I had to cut piles of grass and uh, five foot high grass, and I couldn't find a better knife than this. But for everyday tasks, it was still more blade than I really wanted. So, here's a, right down here is seven more knives. I got picked up this, uh, it's called the Victorinox um, Florist. It's got a sheep's foot blade with a chisel grind. Um, it's also known as the uh, gardener or the utility knife. I thought it would make a great um, pocket knife for life and a great great replacement for the uh, spider coal. But it had problems. If you look at the blade and the handle, it fits good, has a really strong spring. But this blade is pretty short for that handle length. So this was kind of thin but long in the pocket for that blade length. If it had a little, if it was about a half inch shorter handle, it would probably be perfect. But I rejected it just because of the short blade length in relation to its uh, overall length. Um, I tried this. I, I wore this every day for three years. This is an open L number four. See that? You can see the patina on that carbon blade. Or all over it. The whole thing is all worn out. But uh, this wasn't enough blade. Um, whereas this uh, Spyderco was too much blade, this thing really wasn't enough. The problem with it is, as you can see, it doesn't have a, a lock on it. No back spring, no lock. And if it was real dry out, I'd op reach into my pocket and it would be, to take it out, and it would be open like this in my pocket. A couple times a year I'd encounter that, but I never was cut on it. Um, other times it would swell shut, and you'd almost have to use uh, pliers to pry it, pry it loose. And uh, so I didn't care for that. But the main thing is it didn't have a lock, so I rejected it. I decided it can't be a pocket knife for life. It only weighed one third of an ounce, so that was great. In fact, here, let me grab my house key. Here's my house key. It was the same weight as my house key, almost the same size. So it was tiny. Just a great little knife. It did everyday little tasks. I was opening bags, but it was never really enough blade. So I went and purchased the Open L number six. Show you that real quick. The six has the rotating lock ring. It has a stainless steel blade. If you take the blade on a, sta a stainless steel open L, L blade and you push it into white styrofoam a couple times, pull it out, it'll polish the blade nicer than it looks right now. However, it weighs one ounce, so it was three times larger, three times heavier than the number four. It locked real nice, and it's a great knife. I use it all the time. But, as you can see, much larger. Too bulky in the pocket for its weight, so I rejected it. So that was three pocket knife knives for lives that never worked out. So I bought what I thought would be the ultimate. I paid about $28 shipped, and I picked up a Victorinox Solo. It's got the extra thick blade of the uh, farmer. Kind of hard to tell here. Let's, let's just quickly open up these two. There, there's the uh, utility, and there's the uh, Solo on top might be hard to tell in this video but the blade of the uh, of this um, solo is thicker and I thought it would be fantastic but it has the slippery handle and it started sliding around in my pocket and I feel that this knife could um, in time slide out if you laid down on the ground and got up it could you it could end up losing it on the ground in addition to that it bit me three times in three months of carry that's once per month. You'd be, I'd be talking to somebody. I'd be closing it up, and it would, and it would, cut my hand as right about, right about here when I was closing it, and I have to stick a band-aid on. And I just decided 
I don't like that. I had only been bitten once by a pocket knife in my life, and then three times in three months is too much. I decided that the problem was it's too narrow. Let's see how thin it is. Compare it with something like this uh, Open L. It's a thinner knife. And your hand's always close to it, to the blade, when you close it. So I had to reject it. What I thought would be the ultimate, that was the end of it. So, my brother gifted me this knife right here. This is a Camillus muskrat pattern. Uh, Camillus is now made in China. They, they are making some knives in the U.S. again. And the blades on this muskrat are made in uh, Japan of Aus 8 steel. Um... So it's a kind of a Japanese, but assembled in China knife. But it was really, really, it's been gr a great knife for use on uh, um, trimming venison. When I get a deer, I'll use it, and I'll use it and use it, instead of, instead of uh, skinning muskrats. My muskrat trapping days are over. When, you're, when it gets dull, you close it up, you just open up the other side, and you've got a second blade. It's about the same thing, same Turkish clip point. Um, so it doubles the the useful working life on the knife before you have to sharpen it. Weighs a couple ounces, so it's not too bad. A um, little bit sharp in the edges, not too bad. Really, it's a nice knife. Or like, you can get these for like 14 bucks ship, sometimes cheaper on uh, eBay. But uh, I just I wanted a little bit lighter pocket knife, and I just uh, wanted more utility than two of the same blade. Two of the same blade makes sense if you're doing a single task, like skinning muskrats or trim and venison, but uh, for every for a variety of tasks, it might not be the best. So I, I uh, set that aside and I decided, let's look at a Stockman. This is a three-bladed Stockman. I got to fix, fix it right here. It's all scraped up. I found this down at the river. It's an old colonial. Um, it has great steel. That 1095, in all likelihood, carbon steel. It really holds a nice edge. And it's got this, the clip point of a muskrat knife. Um, in addition, it's got this neat little pen blade. I'll talk about pen blades and what I use them for later on. That's kind of cool. And if I could open it up here. Hold on a second. There we go. I keep hitting the camera and bouncing it around. It's got a cool little uh, um, Sheep's foot blade. This works well for like opening boxes. So these Stockman knives have a lot of reasons to carry them. It weighs about 1.6, 1.7 ounces, so it's lightweight. The problem with the knife, the knife like this, is simply who wants to carry as your pocket knife something you found down at the river? Something with fake stag handle. Um, you can get one in near mint condition, like I said, cheaper than this. or I mean, I mean cheap. Um, but still, it's just not classy enough. You want some class. And that leads me to my current knife. Okay, this one I carried for the last year. I got it. Well, no, no, I got it in July, early July of 2017. So we're going on a year. This is a neat knife. It's a little case peanut. It's got your little clip point blade, a little smaller than the Stockman, um, but still a neat little blade. Comes in handy for opening uh, packages, for cutting cord, things like that. It works out real well. It's got uh, this uh, great little uh, um, pen blade. Uh, the, the pen blade was originally designed for um, sharpening the, the ends of uh, feathers, like um, turkey feathers, to make pens out of. I use it, believe it or not, for splitting turkey and goose uh, fe um, feathers down the quill. I'll set this on, this little blade on, um, and s slice right on down the quilt uh, when I'm making fletching for primitive arrows, or semi-primitive arrows. I think it's so, for me, this little blade actually has use. It also, I didn't think it would be as good as a box cutting blade, or a blade like this, like this uh, sheep's foot, for opening boxes, but it proved to be the best blade I've ever used for opening boxes. It doesn't go in too deep, cut the cut, it just really cuts. Um, so it's a great little, this case peanut is a great little knife. This one is interesting. I, for about two bucks more, I could have bought the same knife in bone. And I took the Delrin instead. Because DuPont Delrin is the most time-tested um, 
of, and most durable over time of all of your knife handle materials. And uh, um, it might not be the classiest looking, but with this shield, with this case shield, this particular knife is rare. I've seen one other. Um, you can get the red, a lot of red, red Delrin uh, case knives, but like the Fireman's Knife, um, the Boy Scouts of America knife, they, the Christmas knife every year they have one in red, but not with that shield. It always has a different shield. So I thought that was pretty neat. As time has gone on, I felt this knife had no chance of being a pocket knife for life. What I liked about it, I heard it, it's a good one for biting your hand. I don't know how you could get bitten with it. When you push it, it'll stop. It has a half stop on both blades. Both blades, I'll open this one. You can see you push it forward, it stops. And it goes again, so you can't cut it on, uh, close it on your hand. Um, it has been fantastic. I thought it's just not enough knife. It's too small. It weighs one point six or something, like one point two ounces. Um, it's just uh, too small for everyday use. But it's the longer I've had it, the more I like it. Little little knife. You can see again in comparison with my house key. Not too much larger. Here it is in comparison with that little one-third ounce knife. A little bit bigger. Maybe one well, of no, the blade lengths are about the same. Let me open this up. Let me open that up. Here we go. The blade lengths on these are... The actual cutting edge on these is, is pretty close to the same. But this is a more capable knife. This is solid. It's got a solid spring so it stays in place. It doesn't have a lock but that spring does the job. Um, this right now may end up becoming my pocket knife for life. But you know what? If you like knives, it's really hard to just settle on one. Um, I use knives all the time for different tasks. But for that one, that little one in your pocket that you always have on you, this might be good enough. But I'm thinking something like a cross between this and this might be best. I'm talking a case stockman, case knife. Stockman, you can see the size comparison of these two. Stockman's a half inch longer or so. Um, it has the clip point blade, but it's a, that's, it has the pen blade. Here it has the, the clip blade, but it's a little bit longer. And then it's got a sheep's foot, but maybe what you might want to do is buy this case Stockman with the punch. That's only about 40 bucks, and you can get it in real, real um, stag. And uh, or both, I think, yeah, I think they have one in Stag and they have one in uh, in the yellow plastic. But you get the the case Stockman would have a class like this little peanut knife. Um, it would have uh, quality workmanship. But I'm just not sure if I would use that punch that often. Some people would use it all the time. I'm thinking maybe the case Stockman with the blades this one has, the sheep's foot instead of the punch. That might be my my uh, pocket knife for life. So I haven't decided yet. I wasn't going to do any more of these uh, tabletop reviews because they don't tell you much, but I have used all these knives so I can talk a little about them and, and actually know something. And I'm telling you, it's really hard to figure out what you want to use as a pocket knife for life because your tastes change over time. Your lifestyles can change a little bit. Your tasks to use a knife can change a little bit. Maybe become a little more pedestrian. If I was in the woods all the time, I, my pocket knife for life would be a would be a uh, maybe a, um, a a Victorinox farmer or the hiker, something like that. I'd want that saw, you know. So that's it for now. Um, I'll do another video if I change my mind on uh, and get rid of this case or decide not to carry this case as my lifetime knife. But for now, it's I think it's going to be the case. I think it's the best of all these knives. Like I said, this one, no lock. This one, not enough utility. Um, this one, not enough class. This one, bit me three times. This one, too big for its weight. This one, too long of a handle for the short blade. This one, nothing special, but nothing really wrong with it. it just I just seem to like it more and more. Plus, red is my favorite color, so I like that too. So, uh, until next time, I'm going to close this video, and like I said, I'll get back to you if I change my mind on my pocket knife for life. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you later.